boys what's good it's harm we're back with the third mock draft of 2024 uh we are four rounds in a march madness past the 64 32 sweet 16 and elite eight this is the pre-final four mock draft and if i'm being honest i think march madness has changed things a lot there are really good international prospects but there are also some pretty good college ones and some ones that are really making a name for themselves and improving their stock throughout the tournament so far so we're going to get into that and we're going to talk about the entire first round with a, a little bit of insight on each player and i'm excited to do it we've been off for a few days but we're back and we're doing it with a mock which are are a staple of the channel but let's just get into it let's not waste any time uh, and let's start off with the number one overall pick which belongs to the D detroit pistons via record and with the first overall pick the pistons would select small forward zachary Rissacher out of france 19 years old six foot nine wing uh all stats are going to be per 36 minutes that's the way tankathon does it and i think it's a, a pretty good comparison point for different players in different leagues and stuff like that so 17 points per game for rissa share on over 50 percent from the field and 47 percent from deep i think they're pretty set on guards with Cade and Jaden ivy i like marcus sasser as a backup guard as well uh and i really love jalen duran as their big man so i think they're set on the edges in terms of guards and bigs but what they do need is another wing and they really need one that can shoot and Rissa Cher can shoot the ball at a very high level they need more shooters and he's kind of a do-it-all wing he can defend multiple positions basically one through four uh isn't super built but you know he's going to be outmatched against some bigger fours but still a versatile player and a guy that i think fits with the pistons very well and they need the shooting they need some of the playmaking that he'll provide and i just like the fit especially after trading boyan bogdanovich at the trade deadline getting a wing slash forward that can shoot the ball like rissa share feels like a great pick for the pistons at number one at number two, we have the Washington Wizards selecting, and I have them taking center slash power forward Alexandre Saar, also out of France. 19 years old, playing in the NBL, a very uh, athletic and quick big, who's really kind of like a wing in a center's body. 19.2 points per game, 9 rebounds, 3.1 blocks, in about 58% true shooting, 7 foot 1, a really big dude, and the Wizards just need a big man. Uh, they have Marvin Bagley and Rashawn Holmes right now as their big man rotation, and to me, that's just not going to cut it. They traded Daniel Gafford away, who was really their, their best center by a long shot, so that leaves... Uh, pretty much no one and Alex Saar would be a great fit they need more defense they need more shooting he can space the floor pretty well for a big man and he's only going to get better at it I think Saar could be a really good building block for this Wizards team uh, and would probably be one of their best players right away I'd assume he'd be a top three guy on this team as soon as next season isn't like a Victor Wemanyama he's not going to be that level of defender but he could be a Chet Holmgren S defender, which is just about a step below. He's going to be a phenomenal defensive player because he can guard on the perimeter and down low in the post. At number three, we have our first college player, and that would be Rob Dillingham out of Kentucky. Uh, who, you know, the Kentucky loses in their first game of the tournament, but Dillingham was a little better than Reed Shepard. And overall, over the course of the season, I like what I saw. Uh, in the overtime elite, people were a little worried that he was kind of ball hoggy, but... I thought his passing this year was pretty solid. 23.5 points per 36, 6 assists per 36, 1.6 steals, uh, and 44% from deep. They do need a long-term point guard. Trey Jones is solid, but feels like more of a backup than a starter. So you get Rob Dillingham in there who can really score the ball, can shoot the ball, and that's what they need. They need more shooting. They need more scoring. Uh, he's not a fantastic defender, but when you have one of the greatest defenders uh, that we've ever seen, and Victor Wembanyama, it can kind of cover up for a guy like Dillingham, who is just six foot three. Jeremy Sohan, a really good defender as well. I like the idea of pairing a dynamic scorer and passer like Dillingham with Victor Wembanyama, and he goes number three. I know some people aren't this high on him. I believe uh, the Ringer still had him at eleven. I think in their last mock, Bleacher Report and ESPN are buying the hype, and so am I. Dillingham is a very unique scorer. It's hard to 
even find a comparison with the athleticism, the scoring, and some of the playmaking. He's just a really fun player and would be great to watch with Wemby. At number four, we have the Charlotte Hornets, and I have them going his Kentucky teammate, point guard slash shooting guard Reed Shepard. Had his worst game of the season in their uh, only tournament matchup, but he was so good over the course of the year, kind of breaking analytics good, that I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to say that's an outlier. The rest of the season shows it, and I, I, I'm going to take him here for the Hornets. Uh, this kind of floats into the idea that Brandon Miller and Miles Bridges are going to be our two forwards. You have Mark Williams, you have Lamelo. So I like the idea of getting another guard. And I thought about Stefan Castle. Stefan Castle is a lockdown defender, just super, super high level on the defensive end of the floor. But Reed Shepard, also a really good defender, is kind of undersized at six foot three. He's probably closer to six foot one. The official measurement, I think, is a little generous, but he can shoot the absolute crap out of the ball. 52 percent from deep 54 percent from the field 15 and a half points five and a half assists brings playmaking and shooting and with lamella ball's injury history getting a guy who can be a lead guard or kind of an off ball guard and just a shooter i think is very valuable because he could do multiple things for this hornets team and getting steals getting out in the fast break throwing lobs to bridges and miller is something i think a lot of fans would be excited to get behind a lot of people are concerned with the size but I think he just brings so much. He's so valuable as a shooter, as an offensive player, and even as a defensive guy that I think it's worth kind of ignoring the height issues and taking him at number four. At number five, we have the Portland Trailblazers here, and I have them taking small forward Cody Williams out of Colorado, the younger brother of Jalen Williams, who's balling out for the Thunder right now, probably a top 30 guy in the league, and Cody Williams, I don't think he's going to be quite that good, but I do think he's going to be really solid. The Blazers have a ton of guards right now. They have Scoot Henderson, they have Anthony Simons, they have Shaden Sharp, DeAndre Ayton has picked it up as maybe their big of the future, so getting a wing who can defend, who can shoot, feel Feels very valuable because shooting is is kind of an issue uh, scoot is not been a good shooter uh, Shaden Sharp has had some issues shooting, although I think he's going to be a good shooter. But getting a really good defender and shooter, I think, is very valuable. 15 points per game, uh, 4 rebounds, 55% from the field, and 41.5% from deep. Was definitely worse in the second half of the season with Colorado than he was in the beginning. But I'm going to put the faith in the family and in what we saw early on that I think it's going to work out at the NBA level. They have Chris Murray, but Cody Williams is just so much better than what Chris Murray projects to be. So I really like him as a wing for them. He is a step above guys like Tumani Kamara, Jabari Walker, all these wings that they currently have, and he gives them a more bona fide starting caliber wing at the NBA level. At number six, we have the Toronto Raptors, and this is a fringe one because this is top six protected. So this is actually the last pick they would get. So depending on how the lottery works out, they could be picking, they could not. Uh, but for this purpose, they are picking due to standings right now. And I've been going Matas Buzelis out of the G League Ignite. I loved what I saw from him out of All-Star Weekend. He's definitely got some of that dog in him. He hit a game winner and just looked like he really cared. Uh, I know the Ignite is shutting down, but I'm not going to hold that against the prospects that come from it because I still think Buzelis is a very high-level player, and they need a, a wing. They have a couple of guards now in Quickly and RJ Barrett, as well as Grady Dick off the bench, and they have Scotty Barnes as one of their forwards. Uh, they could get a big as well. I don't think Jakob Pertl is probably the long-term answer, but I have them going a wing here, a six foot ten wing at that, and just kind of fits the Toronto mold as a really big lengthy wing who can defend who can do some different things on offense 16 points per game about eight rebounds 2.3 blocks is a pretty good defender on the wing uh, i'd assume he'd play small forward and scotty would be the power forward uh, does not shoot the ball super well, but they have some success stories in that area, namely Scotty Barnes, who really stepped up his three-point shooting this year. So maybe the shooting coaches could work with Buzelis and help him take that next level. 
but I like the idea of them getting an all-around wing to kind of fit uh, what is, I would say, the most glaring hole on the roster right now. At number seven, I have the Memphis Grizzlies taking center, center Donovan Klingon out of UConn, who has really picked up his stock in the tournament, had an eight-block game, had a five-block game in their last one against Illinois, as well as, I think, 22 points, uh, a bunch of rebounds, and five blocks. He's been a menace. And it just a, it looks like a defensive stalwart in the middle. The Grizzlies need a big man. They need a center to put alongside Jaron Jackson. We've seen Triple J at the five. It just doesn't really work. He's definitely going to be a four long term. So I like the idea of getting a center to pair alongside him. They got rid of Steven Adams, but Donovan Klingon could fit that mold pretty well. He wants to be a shooter. You see him attempt some threes, uh, get a little in the mid range. I don't know if they need that. They need a rim runner, uh, and he's pretty agile. He can catch lobs from or whoever and a shot blocking duo of Klingon and Jaron Jackson Jr. would be awesome to watch it would be so hard to score against seven foot two Klingon and his per 36 numbers are ridiculous 21 points 12 rebounds four blocks and is shooting 64 percent from the field super efficient uh, was initially compared to Walker Kessler but I could see some more upside to be even better than that uh, once he gets to the NBA level I really like uh, his fit on Memphis, and I think he could go even higher. Klingon is someone who is really rising throughout uh, UConn's tournament run because of how good he's been, especially on the defensive end. And speaking of defense in UConn, we're looking at Stefan Castle, who goes here at 8. But like I said, I think he could have went as high as 4, maybe even 3 with Stefan Castle. I love what, he's, what he does. He's a clamper defensively. Terrence Shannon Jr., who's one of the best scorers in the country, couldn't do any Thing against UConn uh, because of I believe Tristan Newton is their other guard the combo of Tristan Newton and Stefan Castle are just nearly impossible to score against shut out Boo Booey in the second round too who looked really good in round one and UConn is a defensive like menace as a team right now and Stefan Castle is the best perimeter defender in this draft class uh, the worries are more about his shooting, 26% from three, but over his past 15 or so games, he's shooting like 90% from the line, so there are kind of promising signs that the shooting could tick up, and he could be a better offensive player in the league, but that's really the bet here, because if he becomes a really solid shooter, he could be the best player in this entire draft class, because the defense is that elite. He's going to be one of the best defensive guards in the league. Six foot six, he's got the size, and he just does everything. He's really hard to go past. He'll get some steals, but I just love what he brings on the defensive end. And I love that for Utah because they have Keontae George as their lead guard as a really good offensive hub. But now you get a defensive guy next to him in the backcourt. I think could make a really solid pairing for a long time. 14 points per game, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists per 36 for UConn. While he doesn't shoot great from 3, 47% from the field is still pretty solid, especially considering the threes that aren't going in so uh, I, th I think there's some strong chances that his upside is a lot higher than some people might think at number nine we have the Houston Rockets uh, this pick is coming from the Brooklyn Nets and I have them going small forward Tijan Salawan out of France and I, I really like his game he's picked it up over the past uh, like month or so his draft stock has continued to rise uh, out of France he's the third French player drafted already and uh, just projects as a really good wing defender. Uh, again, one of those guys where the offense will be somewhat of a question, but 15 points, six rebounds, uh, kind of feels reminiscent of like a Bilal Koulibaly type where you're drafting him for the defense, but hoping the offense develops a little more. The Rockets are pretty set at a lot of spots, have their big man in Alperin Shangun, have a couple of guards in Amen Thompson and uh, Jalen Green who've looked really good as of late. Uh, Cam Whitmore is a really good wing scorer, Jabari Smith Jr looks like they're four so really you're just taking upside shots here and I like to take a shot on Salawan uh, out of France as a kind of guy that you could mold into a higher level player on both ends of the floor at number 10 we have the Atlanta Hawks I've been taking uh, forward Ron Holland out of the G League Ignite program is a very high level scorer, just 18 years old, six foot eight, and could kind of be like a Cam Whitmore as player, where he just comes in and just scores in bunches off the bench or as a starter. I just don't think DeAndre Hunter is kind of long for Atlanta, so getting uh, Holland to pair with 
uh, Jalen Johnson as your forwards would be super fun because they're both so athletic and have high scoring abilities. Uh, so whether or not they keep both guards this summer, I think is kind of up in the air. Uh, probably one of Trey or DeJounte are going to get moved. But if they decide not to do that, all of a sudden you have two really good guards and a couple of forwards you could build around as well. So I like the idea here. Uh, whether they keep the guards or not, and pairing Holland alongside Johnson to make an athletic downhill attacking duo. Not a great shooter, but we've seen some Hawks players pick up their shooting as well, uh, like Johnson, who's improved as a three-point shooter, so maybe Holland could do that with the Hawks as well. At number 11, we have the Chicago Bulls getting point guard Nikola Topic out of Serbia. I think this is a steal. I think Topic is probably a top five talent in the draft, maybe even a top three talent in this draft class but has been out with an injury for the past couple months. So while other players have picked up their stock, his has maybe not dropped, but stayed stagnant because of the injuries. So Topic falls in their laps here at 11. The Bulls, I think, still need some guard help. Yes, Kobe White has been a revelation, and Ayo Desumu has looked much better over the past couple weeks, but I still like them getting a guard, getting a potential franchise point guard. And I think Topic could play alongside Kobe White, because while Kobe Kobe White is a really good scorer, shooter, uh, just an energy guy, isn't necessarily phenomenal as a distributor. So getting a guy like Topic who could be a lead passer to fit alongside Kobe White, I really like. 19 points per game in the Adriatic League, 7 assists and 52.4% from the field. Can shoot well from the field and from deep. And I just think he would make a really good impact on this team. Could be like Lonzo with more scoring upside. Not the level of defender that Lonzo is, but just on the offensive end. And I like the idea of the Bulls getting a real steal here at 11. At number 12, this one might shock some people. I have Zach Eady going to the Oklahoma City Thunder. This pick via yeah, the Houston Rockets. They must have gotten it from somewhere else. No, this is the Rockets pick. We, we saw the Rockets pick. It was the Nets before. That's right. But this one is via Houston. And I have him taking Zach Eady, who's been a monster in the tournament. Had 40 and 16, I believe, last game. But has been putting up 30 plus and very high rebounds in essentially every game. It's winning me over. I know a lot of people aren't huge Zach Eady fans. But it's 7'4 with the little baby hook he has. And just the scoring ability. I think it might translate, not to the level we're seeing at Purdue, but I think he could be a 12 to 15 point per game score in the NBA because he's more skilled than a guy like Taco Fall. This isn't just Taco Fall all over again. This dude does have a little bit of an offensive bag, and he could be catching lobs from guys like SGA and Jalen Williams. A lot of people think maybe they want another kind of change of pace guy you could put next to Chet as a, a rim protector alongside of him that brings size, and boy does Zach E bring size so I like the idea of pairing those two together with Chet and Edie and the rest of the team can shoot the three ball so well that you don't even care if he can shoot at all that doesn't really matter to your offense and it would be like an off the bench type role most likely for Zach Edie maybe 15 minutes a game uh excuse me, could play with Chet a little bit, but doesn't always have to play with Chet. And I like the idea of him with OKC. I think it's a fantastic fit. It might be the best fit in the entire league. So if a team is going to do it, I like the Thunder to do it. But with how good he's been lately, I think he has a real case to be a lottery pick. And he's going in the lottery here for me. 28 points per 36, 14 rebounds, 62.5% from the field, and 2.5 and blocks. Has been the most dominant player in college for two years now. And I think he deserves an NBA chance, especially in what a lot of people are calling a weaker draft class. I like the idea of them going with him here at number 12. At number 13, I have Dalton Connect, who I view as a top 7 or 8 guy in this draft class. But just wasn't a great fit with a ton of the teams ahead of him. But I have them going to Portland here because he's just too good to pass up at this point. Uh, but yes, they already got a wing in Cody Williams. But getting one who has more scoring upside and maybe a little bit lower defense I think could be intriguing 25 points per 36 is a scoring machine was just dominant this season at Tennessee put up 37 I believe in their loss to Purdue in the last game of the tournament but was still really impressive despite the rest of his team not playing all that well I thought connect was really good 23 years old did transfer into Tennessee uh, but 
again i don't think the age really matters he's clearly still getting better so you're not taking a finished product here six foot six uh, 5.9 rebounds and shooting 39% from deep as well. I've heard some comparisons to Grayson Allen, but I just feel like he's a handily better athlete than that. Uh, but Grayson Allen this season has been fantastic. One of the best shooters in the league uh, has had a lot of high scoring affairs. So connect feels like pretty good value here at 13. At 14, I have the New Orleans Pelicans via the Lakers taking point guard Isaiah Collier out of USC. Uh, I believe they have swap rights for this year or next year, so they could pass this up and allow the Lakers to take this pick. But for the point of this draft, the Pelicans will be taking it. So they get a point guard they take a swing on upside the pelicans are one of the deeper teams in the league they're really stacked at a lot of positions but they don't really have a real point guard it's been cj mccollum at point guard basically all season dyson daniels gets some mix at point guard i'm not sure dyson's a real point guard either uh, jose alvarado would be the closest thing to a real point guard on the roster but i like a swing at collier who was once viewed as maybe the first overall pick in the draft uh, there were some turnover issues and had injuries over the latter half of the season, so it was going to slip down a little bit, but I still like the upside as a score and a little better playmaker than people think. 19.6 points per 36, 5.1 assists, 34% uh, from deep, not great, but earlier in the season it was looking good, so maybe it could pick back up in the NBA level. We'll see. 49% from the field, though, is solid overall. Really good downhill score. At number 15, I have the Sixers taking Jacoby Walter, who I think I had the 8th pick in my last mock, and it's not even anything against Jacoby. He was really good in the in Baylor's first matchup of the tournament, wasn't as good in their next one, but overall, I think Jacoby has had a pretty solid season, is a really good score. The efficiency hasn't quite been there, but I think Projects is maybe a really good scoring wing. And I think for a team like Philly, who could use another guard and another young player to put some hope into, pairing him alongside Tyrese Maxey in the backcourt, I actually really like. Uh, and I think his shooting will pick up at the NBA level. 16 points per game, uh, 5 rebounds, 34% from deep. But again, he was another guy who was higher earlier in the year. So we'll see what happens there. But as a really good scorer and athlete, and, and uh, just gives Philly a player that they might not usually get upside-wise. At number 16, I have the Miami Heat here taking point guard Devin Carter out of Providence. A really physical defender, a physical offensive player as well. Kind of fits the, the Miami Heat mold of tough, aggressive players. 20 points per 36 for Providence. 8.8 .8 rebounds, 4 assists, 47% from the field, and 1.8 steals per game. Uh, is one of the better risers over the past month and a half uh, because of how good he was for the whole season for Providence and is one of those guys that wasn't a first-year college player but really picked up his stock by coming back and I think it did wonders for his draft stock and he's just a really good scorer and I think he's better defensively than a lot of people might give him credit for at number 17 we have the Toronto Raptors via the Pacers uh, this coming from the Siakam trade and I'm taking point guard you could call him a shooting guard Jared McCain out of Duke was a freshman 20 years old six foot three 15.8 points per 36 5.7 rebounds 2.2 assists but you're taking him for the shooting 41 percent from deep and was also uh had a really good tournament game i can't remember how many threes he had it was either seven or eight he made a ton of threes in one of their tournament wins uh, i believe it was the second round and he was phenomenal in that game uh he's just a really good shooter and pairing him with grady dick in the backcourt could give you a ton of shooting especially with rj barrett's improved shooting over the course of this season uh toronto could become a much better offensive team pretty quickly just by getting some more spacing even off the bench at number 18 i have the phoenix suns taking shooting guard terrence shannon jr out of illinois he's a very divisive player i know the ringer didn't even have him as a first round pick and i think uh bleacher report had him as a lottery pick but uh he's just a a, a very high level scoring talent I had some off the court issues, some really serious ones, but they were very interested in trading for Miles Bridges reportedly at the trade deadline. So maybe they don't really care about stuff like that and they're willing to take the the, ta the uh, talent even due to the off court risk, you might call it. But 
they need more scoring they need more production because on nights that booker kd beal get cold the offense gets really ugly so just adding a guy off the bench who could be a really solid scoring type i think makes a lot of sense 24.4 points 4.2 rebounds 2.4 assists and pretty efficient at about 48 percent from the field uh remind reminds me a little bit of tj warren who the suns also had for a while uh, tj warren was a really really good college scorer at nc state and it felt kind of reminiscent of how shannon was a scorer as well so uh kind of fits a former phoenix sun as well as just what the suns need off the bench uh could easily give you like 12 points a game in his rookie season off the bench uh maybe not super efficient at the nba level but we'll see and could give you 20 on any given night he's just that good of a scorer uh, but there are some real serious off-court issues, like I said, so we'll see what goes on. But at number 19, I have the Orlando Magic taking shooting guard Kaishan George out of Miami, a very big guard. The Magic this year have, have tried out a ton of really big lineups, and I say why not just keep adding to it. Uh, 20 years old, six foot eight, really big for a, a guard. Could play some point guard, but that's not really his main position. 12 points per game, 4.7 rebounds, and 3.4 assists. But the big part is 41% from deep. The Magic need more shooting, and they need more playmaking. So getting a guard that can do both, I think, is super valuable for Orlando. And, you know, whether Anthony Black is a long-term point guard, or Mark Hell, or Cole Anthony, or whatever, uh, getting Kaishan George in that guard rotation, I think, could make a real impact. At number 20, I have the Atlanta Hawks this one coming from the Kings taking uh, forward Tristan De Silva out of Colorado 23 years old can play some point forward uh, pass the ball a little bit but 17 points 5.4 rebounds uh, shot 49% from the field and 39% from deep can give you some reliable spacing off the bench if you're Atlanta and a lot of people really like Tristan De Silva is one of the kind of under the radar guys who some people th could think could go higher uh, after some NBA scouting at number 21, I have Tyler Smith going to the New York Knicks, uh, a power forward. Uh, they traded for Bojan Bogdanovic, and he just hasn't been all that good. So getting a, a wing slash power forward off the bench, I think could really help. Has been a really good scorer at the Ignite level, 22.3 points, 8.3 rebounds. Uh, and 36% from deep. Projects is a guy who could uh, grow into a pretty solid shooter at the NBA level. And when you add that to his athleticism, maybe this looks like a really good pick here at number 21. And 6'11 is pretty good size for a power forward as well. Uh, so it could come off the bench in a reserve role for Julius Randle. And you could play him alongside Hartenstein or Mitchell Robinson or whoever. At number 22, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers, and I have them taking a shooting guard, Kevin McCuller, out of Kansas. Uh, 19 points per game, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists. I think they need a little more guard play. The reserve guard play to me isn't fantastic. I do really like Craig Porter Jr., but this feels kind of reminiscent of another guy they took out of Kansas, uh, Ochai Baji, who they ended up training to the Jazz in the Donovan Mitchell deal. But... Uh, they like the kind of mold of player that you have in McCuller as a kind of polished uh, college star who's a pretty good scorer and the shooting projects is, is probably a good thing. Uh, Agbaji, I think, was a little better shooter coming out of college, but McCuller could add some shooting, but also just has the playmaking and the experience the Cavs might want. And over 23, we have the New Orleans Pelicans. <laughs> I have them taking center Kalel Ware to be their backup behind uh, Jonas Valanciunas. Kalel Ware had some really impressive games down the close of the season, was a really high recruit, but wasn't great after his freshman season, transferred out of Oregon to go to Indiana, and put together a really solid season. 7 feet tall, 18 points, 11 rebounds, 2.1 blocks. Uh, can be a good rim protector, a lob threat, and uh, projects as maybe a good floor spacer as well. 42.5% from deep. Uh, I like the idea of Kalel Ware on this Pelicans team, but like I said earlier with the Pals, they just have a lot of riches in a lot of areas, so you're kind of just taking upside swings for New Orleans. And number 24, the Knicks on the clock again, this one coming from the Mavs, and I have them taking a shooting guard, Johnny Furphy, out of Kansas, a really good athlete, and just was more of a flash guy than a consistent 
uh, player throughout the season, but 13.5 points, 7.8 rebounds, 46% from the field. Uh, getting a big uh, guard that you could play alongside Jalen Brunson, I think should be enticing for a team like New York, who does have some size issues in their backcourt. Deuce McBride, not very big either, but again, getting a six foot nine guard who can guard multiple positions and be a really good athlete, I think would be awesome. Especially a guy who can dunk the ball as well as he can. Getting a rim attacking duo of Furphy and OG Ananobi would be really fun uh, to watch for this next team. Also played at Kansas, so he's kind of used to the big Showtime stuff that you would get with MSG. At number 24, I have the Milwaukee Bucks taking center Kyle Filipowski out of Duke. Brooke Lopez getting older and older. Bobby Portis has been kind of up and down this year. So getting another big that you can throw in that rotation, I think makes a lot of sense. Seven feet tall, a sophomore. 19.6 points for 36, 10 rebounds, and about two blocks on 51% from the field. I had him top 10 in my last mock, uh, but I just like a lot of different centers more now. So he kind of fell down the center group. Uh, so he falls all the way down to 25. Uh, some of the attitude stuff, I don't love with him either. So he, he falls to 25, but the Bucks get a solid backup big. I don't think he's going to be a great starter ever, but I do think Filipowski is going to be a really good backup for probably a pretty long time. So I like the idea of taking him here, and I think the Bucks get a good value backup. And a lot of people have talked about it. This is a really good class for rotation players, uh, more so than stars at the top, but it is really deep with guys who can make an impact. At number 26, I have the Washington Wizards taking a center again. They took Alex star with the second overall pick and i'm gonna have them take uves misi out of baylor uh sar can play some power for us so you could mix these guys together six foot eleven good shot blocker as well 2.4 blocks 8.8 .8 rebounds and about 17 points but the idea here is again that the wizards just don't really have any bigs right now bagley is cool i like bagley rashawn Holmes should not be a rotational big in the year 2024 especially not in the 2025 season so getting another young big in there i think would make sense they need some guard play as well you could add a wang but you've asked Misi, probably the most talented player on the board so i go with him here at 26 at 27 i have the minnesota timberwolves taking point guard tyler kolak out of marquette uh, Mike Conley is getting up there. I believe he's 36 this season, uh, and they just need more guard play. They have Monte Morris now they traded for at the deadline, Jordan McLaughlin as well, but I think Tyler Kolek could be a reserve guard pretty quickly and maybe the heir apparent to Mike Conley as the, the starting point guard for this team. Six foot three, 17 points, 8.4 assists, and 5.4 rebounds, as well as shooting 39% from deep. Uh, can space the floor for them. They do need some more shooting overall, I'd say. Probably isn't going to be a great defender, but they do have Jaden McDaniels, Anthony Edwards, and Rudy Gobert. So I think defensively, they'll probably be okay. Uh, a guy that can pass pretty well and shoot pretty well, I think makes sense for the Timberwolves. At number 28, I have the Denver Nuggets taking center Deron Holmes out of Dayton. Uh, their backup right now is basically DeAndre Jordan, maybe some Zeke Naji in there. But in the playoffs for years, they've had to go Aaron Gordon as their backup five, which works very well. I'm not saying that that's a bad plan, but they definitely need a better backup big. And Holmes fits that mold pretty well. 21, 6 foot 10, 23 points per game for Dayton. Uh, 9.4 rebounds, 2.3 blocks, 54.4% from the field, and 39% from deep. Could space a little bit, and we saw it in that great comeback that Dayton had. He's a really, really important player and a very impactful one. I think projects as a better NBA player than Zeke Naji or DeAndre Jordan right now. So I think Deron Holmes would be a great pick. I did see Nikola Jokic's endorsement of DJ Burns the other day. I just find it hard to believe DJ Burns would go in the first round, but maybe they could take a flyer on him in the second. At 29, I have the Utah Jazz going forward. Bobby Clintman, former Wake Forest guy, went overseas to play in the NBL to try to improve his draft stock, and it's a weaker draft, so he probably will go first round. 21 years old, 6'10", can guard a lot of positions, and his offense this year has looked better. 17 points per 36, 8 rebounds per 36, and getting steals as well. So you just throw him as kind of a Swiss Army Knife defensive guy out there for Utah. Uh, they have him and they would have Taylor Hendricks. So 
defensively they could get pretty interesting with what they wanted to do and it's kind of a flyer here who on a guy who might work out a lot of people are kind of high on him initially but were disappointed after his year at wake but is probably going to be a first round pick like i said so the jazz here take a flyer and at number 30 the last pick of this mock draft are the boston celtics taking power forward slash center ulrich chomchi out of the nba academy africa uh, is pretty young, 18 years old, and is kind of barely 18, I believe, when the draft is going to be six foot 11. But the Celtics need a big. Al Horford is nearing 40 years old, uh, and outside of that, they just don't have any great rotational bigs. Porzingis is obviously the the best big on the team, but it's Horford, and then it drops off to like uh, like Xavier Tillman and Luke Cornett. And I think taking a chance on a young guy from a kind of less proven area, I think I like it. Uh, I like the idea here. 16 points, 11 rebounds, 4 assists, 3.2 blocks, and 1.6 steals is filling up the stat sheet for NBA Academy. And uh, it's just a guy I think is worth taking a risk on here in the first round. Uh, a lot of people might not say he's a first round pick, but I'm willing to take a flyer here at number 30, especially for a team I think should draft a big. And the last mock item taking Zach Eady out of Purdue but he has been long gone by now after drastically improving his draft stock so they take Chomchi instead at number 30 but that's it for the mock draft today I hope you enjoyed hope you uh, agreed with the picks if you didn't let me know drop in the in the comments below let me know your thoughts think about subscribing I'm on the road to 13,000 subscribers so if you enjoy the content think about sticking around I usually do kind of film breakdowns or just kind of uh talking about players that are playing really well giving players their props so if you like stuff like that think about sticking around but again that'll be it for me i love doing the mocks it's about to be nba draft season pretty hard so hopefully you enjoy it and watch iowa versus lsu women's tonight the rematch i might talk about it tomorrow in the video we'll see but it should be a super super fun game to watch and will be the the big thing going on sports wise for the day so check it out if you love hoops it's going to be a great watch but that'll be it for me today have a good one guys Peace.